Greetings YouTube, family, friends, and subscribers. I've had this diesel generator up at the chicken coop and it died on me. The motor was fine, but it quit putting out power. It's amazing to me how often these inexpensive generators fail. And it's usually something simple, not catastrophic, but their reliability is just so poor compared to a uh, main brand or name brand, I should say, uh, generator. Probably for me, it starts out with Honda being the very best or military generators, uh, which have various different contact contractors. <clears throat> All the military generators are better than the ones that you can buy at Home Depot. This one originally was $1,600 and it's had less than 50 hours on it and it failed. Quit putting out power. So I did some testing on it and found out what was wrong with it. This generator has a capacitor for maintaining the voltage and also handling large surge. It's part of the exciter circuit, I believe, and <clears throat> It was suspect that the capacitor was failing. Behind the end bale on this particular generator head, there was uh, four terminations, L1, L2, <clears throat> and so forth. <clears throat> so it also had two wires going down to a capacitor. And there it is. It's a 35 microfarad, 400 volt AC capacitor. And it mounted behind the end bell, about like that. And so I took it out to do a capacitor test. And on a cap test, you put a shunt type meter. You can use a multimeter, that's a different test. For me, testing capacitors work better with this type. I understand them better. Put it on the highest resistance that your meter has. <clears throat> Connect the contacts to the two terminals and you'll see this meter slowly begin to climb because it's actually taking the power from the battery as it's trying to test for resistance and ends up loading the capacitor with energy. So you should see a steady climb. And this one had zip, nothing at all. So just to make sure it was bad, I did the old school test. I went ahead and plugged this right in for about a second and a half. Uh, all I had available at the time was 120 volts. And just hooked it up for a second and it took some energy. And then I disconnected it, waited a minute or two. And then I shorted across the two terminals and it did discharge with a fine blue spark. And I thought, well, the cap's good. Uh, just something wrong with my meter test isn't working right. So I wasn't sure that that was really what it was. So many other things could be suspect. So again, back on the end bell, there's an L1, L2, R1, R2. And you, you put... Uh, <clears throat> A multimeter on it and see what the voltage is while the engine is running and this is not a how-to video because you can get killed doing this if you don't know what you're doing but most people that are willing to dive into a generator head to fix it themselves have some general knowledge of how not to die doing it so I had an R1 and R2 and L1 and uh, L2 I had three and a half volts now that's technically textbook too low. It should be five volts. And I was three and a half. So I said, well, the armature is probably bad on this thing. And I pushed the generator aside and said, well, I, I'm not even going to mess with it now. Then I checked the two lines that go to the capacitor. Now be very careful with those caps because uh, they'll discharge on your hand and knock you right in the dirt. A tremendous amount of energy in a capacitor. You know, think grabbing the spark plug wire. 
on your lawnmower engine and you have the idea of what I'm talking about, be very careful with them. It's always better to take an insulated screwdriver and short across the two terminals, obviously when the generator is not running, to discharge the cap before you remove it. So I had low voltage on the two lines that go to the capacitor as well. I had 2.3 volts and I should have had 5. And that's saying, you know what, this armature's got problems, uh, forget it, it's going to need a whole new set of windings. And then I thought, why not just buy another cap? It's only 17 bucks shipped from Amazon, and just give it a try. Maybe it's not as bad as you think. So, that's what I did. There was no place to mount this, this monster. I deliberately got this size. The other one was a 35 microfarad, 400 volt, and this one's a 50 microfarad, 450 volts. The difference is with this thing is this is generator specific. It's specifically designed for generator duty and its duty cycle is much, much higher than the original equipment. So it should outperform anything it did with the original capacitor. Here's another thing about a lot of these generators. If you turn them off while they're under load, you can lose the residual magnetism. And then you'll have a hard time uh, getting it to make power again and you'll have to reflash it. That's another video. When I have that happen, I will show you how to flash it. There's several different ways to do it depending on whether you have a brush type or a brushless type. This is a brushless capacitor regulation. Completely different animal than a brush type. So what you do with this type is you remove the load, always turn the breaker off or disconnect the load before you shut the engine down. Otherwise, that load, as the, the armature is winding down, that load is going to remove the uh, residual magnetism in the armature. So let's see if this thing works. $17.95 from Amazon, and she's back in service. Hope this helps somebody. Again, uh, I'm not responsible for anybody getting shocked or, you know, hurting themselves trying to work on these. This isn't a how-to video. It's just sharing information uh, that I got mostly off of reading and watching other videos. There's one guy, the generator guru, he's got a bunch of videos and he goes through the test sequence so that you can test your own generator. And usually when these things fail, it's something fairly simple because the components that they put in these are just beyond cheap. As a friend of mine says, that they are as close to junk as can be without being junk. Well, that's actually pretty true. So upgrade these things with some better parts it's like these solar lights, these solar yard lights. They're actually good to go if you just put a better battery in them. All right. Have a very blessed day. My dog's got the right idea. We'll see you next time.